This is not a sponsored video. Gear review! Ow, fuck! That's right, everyone. Gear review, YouTube's favorite show. Remember when I teased the Polaroid One Step Two review? For me, it's the one instant camera to rule them all. For now. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's a review for the Instax Mini 9. This one goes out to my homie, The Random. Ask for a review on this channel, and you might receive. The Instax Mini 9 is a camera I've had for quite a while now. It was a replacement for my original Instax 7, I think, which was broken by the TSA when I was traveling to Vegas. Real sweet fans will remember that one. But enough chit chat, let's jump into the details, shall we? The Instax 9 has a sturdy build. The body is chunky and it feels like it could take a beating. It's oddly shaped and it's somewhat bulbous. It's very curvy. Or as a massive legend would say, that said, it feels good in the hand. The grip is satisfying, though if you have bigger hands or you just kind of grab the camera weirdly, you run the risk of covering the viewfinder with your index finger. I went with the lime green version of the camera, but it is available in a few bright colors. These are meant to be flashy, aesthetically pleasing cameras after all. The controls are quite simple. You have a shutter button, pretty self-explanatory, and you have a power button, also pretty self-explanatory. The power button pushes the lens out of the body and it also engages the control wheel. Now this wheel is set up to direct your camera's exposure. You'll see on the wheel there's a high key mode, a bright sun, a not as bright sun, a cloud, and a, a house. But what do all these little drawings mean? Well, these refer to your lighting conditions. So when you adjust the wheel, you'll open or close the aperture in an attempt to correctly expose your shot. This little bit of added control, it, it gives you a nice refreshing feeling when you shoot. It gives you a hint more control over your instant photography, which I kind of like. The aperture ranges from f32 at most closed and f12.7 at most open, so you're not going to be killing it with the bokeh, but you'll still produce some pretty nice images. And speaking of all the lens stuff, you have a fixed 60mm focal length with a focusing distance of 2 feet to infinity. The camera has a built-in light meter which will illuminate the control wheel with recommendations of where your exposure should land. It's a pretty cool feature, just be careful not to block out the light meter with your finger as that'll that'll mess you up a little bit. Not saying I have <laughs> experience with that or anything. There's a selfie mirror on the lens as well. I'm not too into that kind of thing, but it's there. It's got a built-in flash and a nice enough optical viewfinder. And of course, there's a little window to let you know how many exposures you have left. In terms of aesthetics, I dig the color for sure. I'm into lime green, but the shape and design is a little strange strange to me. I don't hate it, you know, by any means, but it just feels foreign. I feel the more traditional look of the Instax wide or the newer Instax square cameras. Hey Fuji, send me one of those, but not one of the ones with the screen. Those are stupid and you shouldn't make those because they're stupid. <laughs> you guys wonder why I'm not sponsored. So let's talk about ease of use. Well, let's see, it has two buttons, it's easy as fuck to load the, the film cartridges, yeah. I'd say the Instax is pretty easy to use. It is quite user friendly, honestly. I feel like you can give this camera to a toddler and not really have to worry about it at all. I don't have a toddler, but I will try and show you how easy it is to use. Let's do the first ever Sweet Lou blindfolded challenge, woo! All right, guys, so here is the first ever Sweet Lou Photography Blindfolded Challenge. We have this whole big room to play around with. And yes, I'm here with Horseman. And he uh, he got fired from Amazon because he stabbed too many people. But there you go. And he's going to be assisting today in this beautiful, this beautiful challenge, OK? So we have over here. The Instax Mini 9, the film. Okay, and over here I have a tie from high school, and I'm removing my glasses, and what I'm gonna do is fucking blindfold. Upon editing this, I realized that the blindfold was probably a little bit overkill. See, without my glasses, I kinda see the world like, hmm, like bokeh, actually. Uh, only instead of the subject being in focus, uh, nothing's in focus. But blindfold for good measure. Okay, unpause. Myself with this tie, because I know I'm blindfolded. It's not a sexual deviant. Ew. 
a disgusting sound. How do I look for us, man? Wait. There we go. How do I look now? I'm assuming that that's passionate nodding. Yes, you look beautiful. Let the blind challenge begin. Need intense concentration. Oh, fuck. Oh, this is the tough part. I think it goes in like this. This should be the dark frame coming out here. All right, where are you, horseman? <laughs> okay. I was about to do this, but that. Wait, come closer. Where's your, where's your beautiful face? <laughs> Wait, all right, where's your beautiful face? <laughs> okay, okay. That's your nose. Okay. Good. Honestly, not too bad considering I was blindfolded. Plus, I was talking to a horse man, and he was saying that 50% is halfway to success. Well, shucks, that's pretty easy. So we've talked about the build quality, the aesthetics, the ease of use, but all of that doesn't really matter much if the photos suck, right? Well, let's talk a little bit about the quality of these, in Fuji's words, credit card size prints. The color film is lovely. I really love the saturation on these prints. They capture color quite nicely and they render skin tones well enough. The monochrome film is the same as the Fujifilm Instax wide monochrome, which I talked about at length in this other review. And funny enough, I, I came back to the same waterfall. It wasn't frozen this time though. We also found a lost doggo up there this time. We managed to keep him there with my camera strap on his collar and we got him back to his owner. I really love the film for Instax cameras. I, I don't really have many complaints on the color. I also can't really say much about the price. The Instax film is usually $12.99 US and it's readily available in stores like Target. The wide film is usually a little bit tougher to find in my experience though. My only real complaint is that oftentimes if you're shooting for a distance, the camera kind of has like a 50-50 rate of the shot actually being in focus. I found this to be more of a problem on the Instax Mini 9 than I did on the wide. Now, this is instant film we're talking about here, and I know sometimes matters of focus or exposure can be a little bit, or entirely, out of your hands, but it is frustrating to waste a frame on a completely out of focus waterfall. But at the end of the day, I, I just tried again. That's the thing. While the film isn't the cheapest in the world, it, right now it is the cheapest instant film. It's cheaper than the Fujifilm Instax Wide, it's cheaper than the Polaroid Originals, and it's significantly cheaper than the Impossible Project film. And here is the most important thing, in my opinion. The film is significantly more reliable than the Polaroid Originals and the Impossible films. At the time of recording this video, I'm still working on the Polaroid One Step 2 video, and that video is really gonna go into my thoughts on their film thoroughly. But in a nutshell, I've never had a problem with Fuji Instant Film. I've never had a pack that was expired or had my photos come out partially developed or all scratched up. And that really means a lot to me because after buying the camera, you still have to constantly invest money into the film. And if the film's not reliable, that's not a sustainable system. 
Overall, I really love what Fuji's doing in the instant photography world. I don't love the idea that they've introduced the square camera with that screen. I think that defeats the purpose of instant photography, and that's a that's a dark road to go down. Don't do don't do that, Fuji. I, I like what what you've been doing before that. That newer camera aside, I really love their cameras. I love their prints, and as of right now, the Mini 9 is 60 bucks. Just consider this. For the price of the Mini 9 and 3 packs of film, you're still ahead of buying the One Step 2. And you can buy one Mini 9 with 10 packs of film and still end up spending less than that trash crap doo doo poo poo caca snap touch. And keep in mind, you're getting a camera that's more reliable than the snap touch and film that's more reliable and less finicky than the snap touch. As of now, it seems to me like Fuji is the logical choice in the instant photography world. Granted, I haven't gotten my hands on one of those mint cameras yet, which I'd like to. And also, I'm not trying to hype up this video further, but I need to stress the as of now part, because the one step two might dethrone Fuji. In the next review, so smash that subscribe button guys, you don't want to miss that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. and it's significantly cheaper than the impact it's cheaper than the polaroid and it's cheap fuck <laughs> want to write it on a cute card no i don't i'm gonna do this because i can cut it if i need to all right you snarky horseman you we'll get it in one take you ready i told you me doing voiceover is bad it's really fucking horrible so for you also have a selfie meter on the lens. Uh, it's got a built-in flash, a nice optical. In the next review, smash that. The aperture ranges from f32 at its most closed and f12.7 at its most. That's so hard to say. <laughs>